Hey, welcome back. JP's World of Wrestling. Your man JP here. Today, this guy. We're talking about the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. This is his second Hasbro figure. I don't have his first one, but I have this one, obviously. Uh, but, again, another guy that I got to meet. But not only did I get to meet him, but I got to spend some time with him. About three years ago, when I moved out here to Missouri from Oregon, one of my first days out here, me and my best friend Joe got to interview the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. And we filmed a little TV show. It's called Skywatch TV. And they deal with a lot of like Christian subjects. But on that day, we got to interview Ted DiBiase about interviewing about his faith and about his wrestling career and all that. And we filmed this. That's right, the Skywatch TV Ted DiBiase interviews. And the thing is, I'm actually on this. There's my picture right there. See? It's actually a very cool thing. This is one of my most favorite possessions that I have because I got to be in the same car as one of the biggest iconic wrestlers from my childhood. One of like the top one of my top five heels that I've ever seen on TV. And I just I was in the same car with him. I was right in the back seat when he not only autographed this. The Price of Fame, Million Dollar Man, documentary. But, yeah, so, autograph this. Personally signed to me. I was right there in the back seat when he signed that. But, the night before we filmed the show, we actually went out to dinner with him. And it was so cool. Oh my goodness, it was so cool. We got to talk to him about his career, he told wrestling stories, he was so nice, and we asked him about different angles that the WWF was doing at the time, and we got his thoughts on different things going on in the wrestling industry these days, and it was just, it was amazing getting to talk to him, getting to spend time with him, and he couldn't, he, like Roddy Piper, could not have been a nicer guy. And he actually told me a story about how he called Hulk Hogan and told Hulk Hogan that he was going to come and sign autographs at his beach shop. Not for any reason other than he wanted Hulk to know that he's his buddy and he loves him and he just wants him to know that. So that kind of warmed my heart to hear that because, like I said, I've always been a big Hulkamaniac. Right from the beginning, when I was a kid, Hulk Hogan was the man. The Hulkster, whatever you want to call him, he's the man. And when one of Hulk's friends displays friendship like that and says, Hey, I'm going to do something for you, unselfishly, and I'm just going to do it just because we're buddies, you know, that kind of, that, I got to admit, that warms my heart a lot. But... I remember all the matches that I saw with Ted DiBiase. He was such he was such a great heel, you know. And when I was at dinner with Ted, I told him, you know, I gotta admit, Ted, when I was a kid, I hated you, man. I hated your guts. I wanted Hulk Hogan to squash you so much. And he said, "Thank you," you know, because when you're a heel, you want that. You want people to hate you. You want people to boo you. You want people to want the crap get beat out of you by one of the baby faces. And, uh, so, I mean, he told, like I said, he told a bunch of stories and we took him back to where we were living. We did, we showed him a bunch of the stuff from the ministry and all that. And, you know, he was impressed. And, uh, that was, that was probably one of the biggest thrills ever in my life. Just get being in the same car with the guy that bought the number one time slot 
in the 1989 Royal Rumble match. Everybody remembers that angle when he drew probably number one and then didn't like it, so he kind of wheeled and dealed with Slick. And then when the match happened, he was number 30. But then the next year, no, you can't do that, DiBiase. The next year, he drew number one. So, and then I will never, ever forget the angle he did with Hulk Hogan when he offered to buy the WWF Championship from Hulk Hogan. Just, just buy it so that he could just have it without earning it. Man, what a dastardly thing to do, Mr. DiBiase. To which Hogan said, No, I'm not going to sell you the WWF Championship. So, DiBiase hired Andre to beat Hogan for the belt, and then Andre gave it to DiBiase, which led to DiBiase being stripped of the title, which led to the big tournament at WrestleMania 4. So, DiBiase's been involved with some pretty high-caliber storylines in the WWF. And who can forget, in the mid-90s, when he formed the Million Dollar Corporation, starting with Nikolai Volkov. This guy. I remember DiBiase <clears throat> making Volkov wear a t-shirt that looked kind of like his tuxedo, except in the place of a dollar sign, it was a cent sign, which was really humiliating for Nikolai Volkov. Nevertheless, Nikolai Volkov was part of the Million Dollar, million dollar Corporation, <clears throat> along with guys like Tatanka, the One Two Three Kid, Bam Bam Bigelow, all of the heels that were around in the mid '90s in the WWF. So that was an amazing experience, and I'm so thankful for my time with Mr. DiBiase. And Ted, if you're watching, thank you so much for that experience. Love you, brother. Now, if you're new here, please like and subscribe to my videos, and I'll see you next time.